What's going on YouTube? Uh, this morning we're actually going to be smoking this uh, this gorgeous uh, eight and a half pound uh, chuck roast right here. Uh, I've got some uh, some Kingford uh, bold smoky most mesquite flavored uh, charcoal, uh, and I'm going to be using this uh, Grillmates barbecue rub. Let's take a nice close look at this beautiful uh, chuck roast. This is a choice cut of uh, beef that I got from the uh, Springfield butcher. And like I said, it's eight and a half pounds. So let's get some of this uh, rub on here. Most of the time, if you find one of these, uh, you know, at the grocery store, you know, it's only gonna be about an inch thick. If you happen to find one like this, that's two inches, this one's almost three inches thick. If you happen to find one of these like this at the grocery store, you definitely wanna pick it up. But otherwise, you're probably gonna have to go to a, uh, go to a butcher. I'm not going to completely seal the meat in uh, with this uh, with this rub because I do want some of the smoky flavor from the uh, from the grill uh, to get on here. Let's flip this over. There's some really nice uh, inner muscle fat in here, so it should keep this nice and moist and juicy. And because it's so thick, we want to make sure we get the sides. I've never actually smoked one uh, this big before, so this is a, this is going to be a first for me. I wanted to smoke a brisket, but geez, a, a brisket this size, a brisket like this, you know, even just the uh, just the flat would have cost twice as much as this. This already is a eighty dollar piece of meat. Done. Now that we have the rub on this uh, gorgeous piece of meat, I'm going to go and I'm going to stick this back in the uh, refrigerator uh, and I'm going to get my 22-inch uh, uh, Weber kettle grill all ready to go. And we're going to be cooking this uh, with the uh, snake method. So we're going to wrap the charcoal, you know, all the way around the edge. And I'm thinking I'll probably have about eight hours of life on this grill before I have to uh, start adding some more charcoal to it. So let's get this in the fridge and we'll start building the snake. You do want to start with a relatively clean uh, kettle. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump a bunch of charcoal in here and then I'm going to start building the snake. And this is going to be a pretty long snake because I need this to last for a long time. I'm kind of leaning the, uh, the briquettes up against each other. This is going to be a two by two snake. Starting on the second layer. The reason for doing this snake is so that I can light one portion of it and it'll slowly burn its way around and I can keep the temperature uh, down to about 250 degrees, which is what uh, I want to cook at all day long. I'm thinking this smoke is probably going to take me at least eight hours to do, maybe a little bit longer. I've never smoked, like I said, I've never smoked one uh, this big before. Please. Got some of these little broken ones, so I'll just kind of scatter these around. No sense wasting good uh, briquettes. Beautiful snake. While we're waiting for the uh, 
charcoals in my uh, chimney uh, to get ready. Uh, let's kind of go over a couple of the uh, items that I'm going to be using uh, for the smoke. Uh, I've got some uh, Kingford uh, uh, Hickory uh, barbecue uh, smoking chunks. I have my uh, temperature probes. And I have my InstaRead thermometer. And if you're interested uh, in a little review on this Thermapro InstaRead thermometer, uh, I will stick that up uh, over here or over here, whichever way it goes. To start this snake, uh, pretty much I'm going to get these charcoals that are in my chimney. I've got about 10 or 15 uh, charcoals in my chimney. Uh, some of them were left over from my last uh, smoke uh, and some of them were fresh. I'm actually going to pour that right over the very beginning of this snake. And then once those charcoals start to catch, I'm going to put one of these hickory chunks on top of that. And once that starts to catch, I'm going to put the lid on it. Um, and then that'll kind of smother the fire out that's on the, uh, that's on the wood, but will allow a lot of smoke to uh, fill up the chamber. Uh, and as the grill is coming up to temperature, once the grill hits about 250 degrees, I'm going to grab that beautiful uh, piece of beef and I'm going to stick it on the uh, grill. I think those coals are looking good. They're uh, red hot. There's a little bit of flame still, but I think that's okay. I'm going to dump those on and I'm going to start this snake. And uh, let's get this smoke rolling today. See those briquettes? They are absolutely perfect and ready to go. Kind of move them around a little bit. This, of course, is going to be indirect uh, heating. So we're going to start by putting the meat over on this side. And then as the fire goes around, we're going to slowly start bringing it around. And you can see I've got a little bit of uh, tin foil I put on the bottom here just to help catch some of the drips to keep my uh, kettle uh, a little bit on the not so nasty side. Let's get one of these uh, wooden bricks. I'm gonna wait a minute for that first piece of wood to, uh, to kind of catch. And then I'm gonna put the grate on and close it up and get the grill up to temp. I've got my temperature probe set up. I've got my grate on. Time to close the uh, lid and get this up to temp. I got the vent on the top all the way open and the vent on the bottom all the way open. And then once we're up to 250 degrees, we will put the meat on. It is eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, the sun is up. It is 50 degrees outside and the inner, the inside temperature of my kettle grill is 270 degrees right now. So I'm going to choke it down uh, a little bit, but it is a gorgeous day and I am looking forward to smoking uh, this beautiful piece of meat. So let's get this uh, on the grill. Look at that beautiful piece of meat. I've got my internal temperature of my meat is right around uh, 40 degrees and the kettle temperature is hovering right around uh, 250. So get, let's get this closed up. And if you notice, I have the vent set on the opposite side of the coals because you always want the vent over um, your meat that you're cooking. So like I said, it is a gorgeous day. Uh, it is now a few minutes after eight o'clock. We will just say eight o'clock uh, just for easy math. Uh, and it is, the internal temperature of the grill is 245 degrees and the meat is still uh, pretty raw. So we're in for a long uh, smoke uh, and usually my long smokes all kind of start the same. I start with coffee, I switch to beer, and then I go to whiskey. I've got my grill vents set on the bottom. I've got them set 
about three quarters of the way closed, and on the top I have it set at about half, uh, and that seems to be uh, working. Uh, we'll see now that the meat's on there, we'll see if that changes, uh, but it is 252 right now, which is okay, you know, it, you know, once it gets up to like 265, you know, I'm definitely going to want to lower it down, you know, I'd, I'd really like my cook temperature, you know, to be between like 230 you know, and 260 degrees. Uh, I don't want it to go any higher than that, and I don't want it to go any lower than that. If it goes any lower than that, it's going to take forever. If it goes any higher than that, uh, it's not going to be uh, tender. I am planning on uh, on slicing this and uh, making some making some barbecue sandwiches out of this, uh, but I do have a surprise that I'm going to do uh, at the very end of this video uh, to make this sandwich uh, excellent. So make sure you stick around till the end. All right, so the chuck roast has been cooking for two hours. Um, actually about two hours and ten minutes, uh, so I need to actually uh, uh, take it, take the lid off. I need to look at it, make sure it's not dry, and if it's, if it's got some dry on it, I'm going to give it a little bit of spritz, uh, and I need to actually move it over a little bit, and I might rotate it 180 degrees too, just to keep, because you know, the front side of it, it's such a big piece of meat, the front side of it is a little closer to the coals than the back side of it, so I'll probably rotate it and, you know, spin it around uh, 180 degrees. Uh, and for the last, you know, hour and a half, it's been sitting right at you know, in between 245, you know, and like 260. Um, and I've got the, the grill on the bottom, the grate on the bottom, almost all the way shut, and the top almost all the way shut, because I do have some leaks around the edges. I'm not sure if you can see here, but I do have, definitely have some smoke leaking out. Uh, so I can pretty much keep it all the way closed, the top and the bottom all the way closed, and that is pretty much how it stays, right at about 250 degrees with the way I've got it set. Uh, so let's open this up and see what it looks like. You can see right there how I was talking about the uh, the smoke leaks out the side. Uh, let's uh, open this up and see what this looks like. It is looking pretty good. You can see it started uh, lighting over here and it's slowly snaking its way over. So I need to move this meat over here a little bit and I'm going to spin it around. You can see just with me opening up the lid, the extra oxygen that's gone in, this piece of uh, wood is actually completely caught on fire. So let's rotate this around a little bit. You can see I flipped it around. Uh, I slid the grate and the wood there is on fire. Uh, so once I put the lid back on, uh, that fire will go out. This is very moist, so there's no need for me to spritz it at this point, but like I said, we will check it again uh, in two hours. Let's close it up. And again, I'm, I'm rotating it to make sure that the vent is on top of the meat at all times. So the heat source is over here, the meat is here, and the vent is here. Internal temperature of the food right now is 122 degrees. And now that we just closed it up, it's the kettle is 118, 119, 140. It's going to get up to right around 220. So, all right, the time that everybody's been waiting for, or at least what I've been waiting for. So I've got my internal temperature. The meat is 165, and my kettle temp is 255 right now. So one, about 160 is when I really want to take it off, and I'm, and I'm going to wrap it. But really what I want to do is I want to look at it. I want to make sure the bark is, is in the is in the shape that I want it in. So let's take a quick peek. Mm. That smells so good. Oh my gosh, this is so, there's a little puddle on the top there. But this is just dripping. The bark looks so good. Oh, I, I cannot wait to, to try this. So I put this on at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's 1.30. What is that? Five and a half hours. I told you it started with coffee. Then we go to beer. Mmm. Let me just quick use my Thermo, my Thermo Pro InstaRead. Stick it in here. We've got a five degree temperature difference. It says 160 on this, it says 165 on that. 
I like the way the bark looks, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. I'm gonna put it in this pan, wrap it up, and stick it back on. It is really, really juicy, but I went ahead, and this is the pan I'm gonna put it in, and I'm gonna put tin foil on top of this. I need to, uh, uh, I put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce on it, and I'm gonna put a little bit of tequila in it here as well. Oh, you gotta love tequila. Give that a little swish. I'm gonna put this over here so it's a little closer in case I drop this meat. Let's see if I can pick this up. I really need to get some gloves because I do not want to drop this. And one, two, three, up and over. Perfect fit. Look at that, I bent my uh, spatula. I'm gonna put that back on. I do need to spin this. I'm gonna give it a little spray with my magic sauce. A little dry there, right there. And let's wrap it up with some tinfoil. Stick my probe back in. Close the lid back up. Now the next stage is, is sort of temperature, but mostly tenderness. Uh, so I'm gonna set an alarm on my, uh, on my ThermaPro uh, remote here to go off at 200 degrees. Uh, and ab about 200 degrees is when uh, this should be pretty tender. Uh, so I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna poke it with my, uh, with my, therma, with my therma pen, my Therma Pro. Uh, and if it's tender enough for me, uh, then I'm gonna pull it off at 200. Uh, if it's not quite tender enough, I'm gonna leave it on till, you know, till about 205, you know, and then I'll check it again. And if it's tender enough, I'll pull it off. And if not, I'll leave it on for a few more minutes. Um, but now we're just uh, sit, wait, and drink. So we're probably gonna have it covered for another two hours, I'd imagine, uh, and we'll come back out and check it. All right, so the sun is right there, blasting right in my face. Uh, so uh, my grill temp is still at 250 degrees, uh, 254 actually, uh, and my meat is actually at 202 right now. So let's, uh, let's take this lid off and let's uh, probe it and see how tender it is. Uh, it's definitely tender over here. Whoa, that's super tender. Super tender. Uh, not so much over here, so I'm gonna leave it in a little bit longer. I'm gonna leave it in for another 10 minutes and then we'll come out and check the tenderness one more time. It is getting cold out here. So I've got a kettle temp of 233 and the meat is 208. Let's probe it. Insta read says 205, 205, 206. And yeah, it's super tender. It is ready to come off. So I'm gonna pull it off the grill. I'm gonna stick it inside this cooler. And I'm gonna let it sit there for about an hour. And then we're gonna cut it in half and we're gonna taste it. Ouch. Ooh, there's a lot of liquid sloshing around in there. Boom, closed. I'm gonna add a few more charcoal briquettes because I still have that surprise. And that surprise is I'm gonna smoke some bacon. And these are actually gonna be uh, barbecue uh, bacon burgers. Here we are, we started the day. 
uh, when it was dark and now we're ending the day when it's dark. Uh, this is a, uh, a really good uh, day uh, of smoking and finishing up with whiskey. And here's the bacon that I was talking about. So this is a maple flavored, uh, maple smoked, thick sliced bacon. Uh, so our grill is still at, well it's actually 279 right now, so we'll have to cool it down a little bit. Uh, and it is 45 degrees outside, so I'm a little bit chilly right now. So let's, uh, let's put some, uh, wood chunks on here so it can start smoking. All right, let's open this bacon up. Let's open this bacon up here. And let's put a couple slices on the grill here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that is a Beyond Burger on the side there for my wife. Yes, my wife is a vegetarian. Let's get this closed up and we'll flip this bacon in about five minutes. Here we are, the moment of truth. So this has been cooking since eight o'clock in the morning. And then I took it off about an hour and 10 minutes ago and it's been sitting for an hour and 10 minutes. And right now it is uh, 6.30 at night. So before I open this up, I'm gonna take another quick sip of this. Now let's see what this looks like. It was sitting in a cooler for an hour, for an hour and 10 minutes. And it just, when I opened up the cooler, it smelled so good. Oh, there's so much liquid in here. Oh. Look at this. Let me pull this out and stick it on this cutting board. Let's cut this in half right here. Turn this like this. So you're seeing it before I am. How does that look? Let me just push down on this. Oh, look at that. I hope you can see the juice is just dripping right out of that. Let's slice a couple, uh, let's take a couple slices out of this. This is just falling apart. I could I could pull this. Here it is right here. Look at that. I can't even pick a piece up. It just falls right apart. Let me take a bite. That's really good. Finger looking good. See how it is with a little bit of Woodford double oak. <sighs> so good. All right, I'm gonna plate a little bit of this up and I'm gonna make this barbecue bacon sandwich. Let's put some of this magnificent meat on this bun like this I'm just gonna put a little bit of sweet baby rays on there and then the icing on the cake the hickory smoked bacon this is two strips of bacon that's going on this And then it wouldn't be complete 
without some barbecue baked beans and some barbecue potato chips. Now what I've been dying to try is a bite of this. Mm. This is so good. And the meat's just literally falling apart. You saw this fall right off of it. I might pull the other half and just slice this one up for sandwiches. Mm. I can taste the smoke. I can taste the rub. And I can taste the maple and the bacon. It's so good. I'm going to have one more bite. Mm. I may have to sit down after this. And the double oak Woodford. Icing on the cake. If you guys got any questions at all, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if this is your first time to my channel uh, and you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Have yourself a great day.